Hey, welcome to the shop. So I'm gonna point out some mistakes that I made learning to weld and they're the same ones I've seen others make as well. Good news is you can fix these things right away once you realize they're happening. First up, the twisted wrist. And what happens here is you get set up and you have a good gun angle, you have a good stick out, which is the distance from your contact tip to your work, you're ready to go, and then when you start welding, rather than moving the whole system along, you bend your wrist to travel along, and what that does is it changes your gun angle as you move along and increases that stick out. Your weld quality is gonna go downhill as you move along. So let's run one this way. So I've started welding here, it's going along pretty well, but I'm pivoting around my wrist. And listen here at the end, you can hear the sound of the weld change. And it's just definitely not gonna penetrate as well and not gonna run as smoothly there when I don't have that short stick out or the right gun angle. The solution to this is to move and slide your whole self along if you can. Now that's nice on a bench, but what if you're welding somewhere out of position? Maybe you can put a clamp there, or you know, if you pivot your arm, if you can rest your elbow on something and pivot your whole arm, then you can see that this stays basically pointed with the same angle and stick out as you had before. Here where I'm moving right along, I'm definitely getting a better result than I did when I was twisting my wrist. Next up is the massive tack. Now when you're tacking things together, you wanna make sure and bridge between both pieces of material, but in doing that, when I was starting out, I would make my tacks way too big, and I've seen other beginners do this also. So you'll go in and you'll weld really large, and then you have to deal with that because a lot of times you'll need a weld over your tacks. And if you have a tack that large, it's probably a good idea to grind that down a bit before you weld over it. Now, I like to just make my tacks as small as possible while still having enough strength to hold things together. And most of the time, they can be pretty little. So if you watch here, I'll run one tack. That one is way too big. I'll run one a little bit smaller. It's still bigger than I'd like. Let's do one more and just watch how fast this is. That is a much better tack for, for what I'd like to see. And so if we take a look at each of them, you can see there's a huge difference between them. And so if you have to go to weld over it, welding over something really large is not gonna be good. Now in some cases, when it's a joint that needs a lot of strength, you wanna make sure that you grind your tacks way down so you still penetrate in. Though in a lot of cases, if you have small tacks, you can weld right over them. Next up is the superhero stance, and I call it this because when I was in welding school, I decided to weld everything freehand, and I'm gonna just learn to do that so I can do anything that comes my way. Now, hats off to anybody who's learned to do that, but it didn't work out well for me, and my welding instructor said, look, don't try to be a hero here. Just make the best weld that you can, and if you can prop, then prop. Make it easy on yourself, and I think that's really good advice. When I'm welding along here, you can see I'm just moving all over the place, and I really am trying to keep steady, but what's happening is I'm standing with my feet close together, I'm leaned over and just in a really awkward spot, and so there's a lot of movement in my body and that propagates out to my hand and eventually to the weld. So in order to prevent that, the best thing to do is to prop up. Let me show you a few ways that I like to support my gun with my other hand. My very favorite way MIG welding on the bench, if it works out, is to put my hand vertically here, rest the MIG gun on it, and then I can slide along. The problem that comes up is if you're running very high amperage or a long run, there's enough heat coming off of here that the back of your glove will get smoking hot. So sometimes that doesn't work and I need to help prop back here towards the back side of the gun. That works pretty well too. And you can play around and find ways that work for you. Now, if you're working somewhere where you're not on a bench or you're out of position, what I've found is a pretty common uh, way that works for me is to find somewhere to rest my elbow on the other hand, and then I can kind of adjust, and even if I'm sitting against here or against my hand, then I can pivot around vertically or across, but it just gives me kind of that triangulation there to hold things steady. 
Now, if you absolutely can't prop with your other hand, make sure to get in the steadiest stance as possible, put your feet out at shoulder width, and then tuck your elbow in tight and just reduce the number of joints that move around so that you can control it the best you can. And it's a good idea to hang on to something to kind of hold steady while you're doing it. The next is the skipped test. Let me explain what I mean here. So watch as I weld along here and boom, I blew a hole right through. And if this happens on your project, you're gonna be super frustrated. And the same thing, or even worse, potentially if your settings are too cold or it just isn't running the way you want or you don't have your technique dialed in. So the remedy here is simply to test your settings on a scrap piece of material that you have laying around in a joint that's similar to what you're running here. So you can see I'll adjust my settings in and run a test and it'll work out really well. I remember I was building a swag off-road press brake kit and I decided just to use the auto set on my machine and go ahead and start running along this joint and the way that the joint was, it was kind of like an outside corner and it was just too hot a settings. And so as I ran along, it really just looked awful for the first about three inches till I realized that. Then I got things dialed in and tied back in and the rest looked great. But it drove me nuts so bad I ended up grinding the whole thing down uh, to, to fix that because I hadn't taken the time to just test my settings quickly on some scrap material with a joint similar to what I'm gonna run. So that is definitely a good lesson to learn there. Last up is the slow poke. Now, when you're welding along with MIG, your travel speed is gonna correlate to the size of your weld. So if you want a larger weld, you have to weld slower. If you want a smaller weld, you have to weld faster. But there's more to it than that. And you can fall into a particular trap if you're running along and you're trying to make a little larger weld so you're welding slower or that's just the speed that you're accustomed to and the weld pool gets ahead of you while you're just welding the stringer bead along here. So you can see that I'm not welding up on the front or the leading edge of that puddle. I'm back kind of in the middle of the weld pool and that doesn't put the heat where it needs to be to be able to penetrate down in deep. So I need to do something different. You can see here on the weld, it's just rolled right over the top. Now I don't have time here today to do any mechanical tests or cut it apart, but from past experience, uh, I know that that's not gonna be the case. The solution to this as you travel along is to stay up on that leading edge of that puddle and then use some torch manipulation between the top and bottom and whether that's a zigzag or some other uh, variation of a zigzag, as long as you're staying up on the front edge of that puddle, um, you're able to get the heat there where it needs to be and make sure that you get full fusion down into the root of that joint rather than just rolling over on top. So these are some practical things to look out for and you can fix right away in your technique. If you are just learning MIG welding to begin with, check out the videos I've linked in the description that'll show you some of the very basic fundamentals like setting your machine, basic technique, how to set up a machine, those types of things are all there. Thanks for tuning in. If you liked this video, let me know by hitting that thumbs up below and we'll see you next time.